All right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thanks so much for joining me again today on this episode. My name is Jesse, and I'm the host here on this channel. If you like things pertaining to Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, all that kind of fun stuff, um, please, I invite you to subscribe to the channel down below. And then once you do that, if you don't want to miss anything, any of the content that I upload, maybe some of the live streams that I do here every so often, make sure you click that bell notification and you'll be alerted every time that I upload new content. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a, the final video in a small uh, four part series that I've been running over the last few weeks and um, about the parts of self or the, we're kind of examining the parts of self um, that are looked upon and viewed um, in a Norse society, in a Norse worldview sort of thing. Um, it's a very complex thing that I've tried to basically get into some of the simpler stuff and then go into a little bit of the details about it, but it does get to tend to be quite complex. So the more studies you do, the more in, you know research that you do, the better um, informed you will become. But hopefully this series has helped give you guys some sort of a um, basic understanding and a basic knowledge of what the various parts of self, of ourselves, um, that folks like myself, various heathens um, of the Germanic pagan, you know, inclination uh, tend to look at. So, so far, you're going to see some cards pop up here in the corner. So far, we have touched on uh, the, um, the Homer, uh, sort of that, uh, that hide, that skin, um, the Hugur, the mind, the thoughtfulness, our, our, our cognitive abilities, that sort of thing. We touched upon the Filia last week which was and is that sort of animalistic part of ourselves that can be uh, seen um, by other people uh, traveling in these, in these spiritual you know, journeys and things like that, and that part of ourself that can be seen by others after we die. And now today we go, uh, or we go into the part of self which I feel is very significant to us as heathens even now and today, and that is the Kamingya. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the Hamingya is a probably most uh, often referred to or most often uh, connect uh, you, a word that's most often used to signify uh, the word luck. Okay, um, but luck in a Norse view or in the, in the old uh, heathen view of things, uh, it may not be what you could would consider as luck nowadays or what we may look as uh, at, as luck nowadays. The, um, they, they had a different understanding of it. The, the, the Germanic peoples at the time, they had a different understanding of what luck meant. You did not necessarily have good and bad luck, you just, your luck was what it was. Um, and it is what it is, right? Um, it's tied directly, the Hamingya anyway, it is tied directly to our lineage and our ancestry, our families. Um, so no one's Hamingya is the same, right? Same as like, you know, you may perceive things, uh, you know, the, 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 the philia can be, you know, a person could be, um, their philia could be uh, a cat or, or a raven or a wolf or something. And you could get various people who have that sort of uh, philia, right, who, who are represented and who appear to be uh, in that animal form. Um, so it's not entirely like unique or exclusive. On the other hand, the Hamingya is. Um, the Hamingya is, is, is personified or can be personified, but it is exclusively tied to your family, your lineage, your ancestry, and it is what follows you. It, it, it's what stays with you. Um, sometimes it can go, sometimes it can leave, sometimes it will um, not always be with you. We'll get into a fun little blurb about that here in just a moment, but that is what makes the Hamingya so very unique and so very important, I think, is because it's tied to our families and to our uh, our ancestors, our lineage. <clears throat> so, luck was a quality uh, inherent and is a quality that's inherent in in a person and our lineage as part of our uh, sort of our personality as well. I think um, it can be similar to someone's uh, strengths, their intelligence, uh, their skills you know, uh, that sort of thing, the sort of, uh, th th those inherited uh, fortunes or those inherited abilities, um, I feel that it is quite often tied to 
the reason why some people are just so naturally good at some things while others tend to be lesser or, or weaker in that aspect. You may get some folks who are just naturally good at you know, blacksmithing or naturally good at public speaking or naturally good at just whatever it is that they are without having to take the extra effort to hone that skill, whereas other people just, it's not a part of their hamingya. It's not a part of what was passed down to them from their ancestors and, and, and their family lines, right? Um, and it is at once, an interesting thing to note, the, the hamingya is all in one, the both the, the cause and expression of the success, success, wealth, and uh, power of a family, right? Um, it's the reason why people de tend to do so well. It's, it's one of the big reasons why you see more people successful or seemingly more successful than others is due to the hamingya that has been passed down to them from their lineage, through their lineage. Now, <clears throat> as I said briefly earlier, you know, hamingya is basically luck uh, personified, right? And it can and does um, go with you, you know, so the reason why things tend to be better for you uh, or, 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 or not as good for you or whatever it might be, whatever the cause and uh, expressions of things are, uh, is, is due to the hamingya that, that, that is tied to you and that, that goes with you specifically. It's what has been passed down to you and it's what you've kind of got, the hand, the cards that you were dealt, basically. Um, so it's similar in a way, uh, also though, it, it is similar. We talked earlier about how I said that, you know, the hamingya is very unique in that it is tied to the family, but in that it's not I, it's not like the, the Fidia, for instance, that has, you know, animals that, uh, you know, you could see, you know, a dozen people who uh, their Fidia is like a wolf or whatever. Um, but in, in, in one way, and in one similarity, the, the Hamingya is kind of like the Fidia. Um, and in that aspect, it is that your Fidia, or excuse me, your Hamingya, uh, does not always stay with you. Sometimes your Hamingya uh, will leave you. And you may end up, uh, or, or, or you may uh, loan your hamingya to someone else. Um, so that the way they have, like if you have particularly good hamingya and you have a lot of good things going for you, you can quite often, uh, in a way, impart that hamingya to someone to sort of borrow uh, to help them through some things. Maybe somebody who's very important to you or, or very close to you in a way, and you want them to have, you know, strong luck and, and good things to go for them, you can quite often loan the Hamingya. Uh, but sometimes it just has, seemingly has a mind of its own and you may just be without it one day. Um, and this concept or this this uh, idea that your Hamingya can sometimes leave you is where we get the uh, very common phrase of your luck is running out. You're, you know, you're running out of luck. Um, it's because quite literally at one point in time it was per perceived and believed that your luck could quite literally run out on you and leave you <laughs> and not be a part with you anymore and, and you would therefore be without luck in that particular moment or in that particular instance. So similar to the philia which travels and which is not always uh, static and it doesn't always stay with that person, it can travel and move in, in, in spiritual journey form. Um, in that aspect, there's some similarities between the Fidia and the Hamingya, which will not always stay with you and will quite often sometimes just bounce on you um, and, and, and it'll come back. Um, but I think that that's quite an interesting thing to think about um, that, you know, your Hamingya travels with you or stays with you and goes with you, but some, there's some times where you may just uh, get up on the wrong side of the bed or things may just be happening weirdly for you that day and, and it doesn't quite seem that everything's lining up just right. You, I mean, you could have just taken a day, you know, called in sick, <laughs> whatever. Um, so there's that. Um, one final note that I would like to also add is that um, as we've been talking about throughout this video and, and how closely tied to familial uh, you know, the ancestral lines, your lineage and everything that, that the Hamingya um, is tied to directly. It is, it is passed down from generation to generation, right? So you're going to have uh, perhaps one uh, generation who received Hamingya from the ancestors before them, 
So they are the descendants that, that received Hamingya, or the Hamingya just transferred into that, that, uh, that the descendant's life. And uh, they may need to kind of work things out. They may need to, perf they may need to work their own luck. They need, they need to add to the well themselves to sort of better the, the circumstances of things. Because we are not what our ancestors were. Uh, quite often we, we are what we are. We are our deeds. Um, but we often will inherit and, and receive things that we just have no control over. Um, it's all about... Um, Orlog is a big thing. Orlog is sort of that primal layer of stuff that we just have no control over. It's just, it's there. And it's always has been there. And it's just, what we make of it, what we do with it is up to us. So our deeds, our actions, um, ultimately in the end, are what define how good things go. But we can help shape and we can help form the Hemingya to be something that is carried on for our descendants later on. Perhaps we just got a, a bad batch of Hamingya, right, from our ancestors prior. Maybe there were things that the family did, or that the family was known for, that was carried with that family name, um, that when it is passed down through the descendants just kind of carries on through that name. So once that descendant reaches and, and receives and, and is dealing with that Hamingya, it is up to that person, up to that individual, to ultimately change things a bit and, and make things more beneficial for not just themselves but for their descendants that come after them. And that's why I think that out of all the parts of self, right, the, the, the part that is our personality, the part that is our, our thought and our cognitive abilities, our thought that is the, you know, that, that skin, that, that hide, that layer, um, out of everything that we have, the, the animal parts of ourselves that, that can manifest itself in different ways, out of all the parts of self um, that we as, as Norse heathens will view the overall person as, I think the Hamingya is probably the most important, one of the most uh, important things that we as, as, as heathens nowadays should invest in because once we die, once our physical self is gone, once we no longer exist in this physical, way, there are parts of ourselves that live on and that exist. And I think the Hamingya is one of the most important parts because it, it, it carries on down through our families and, and carries on down through our, our lineage. So what better thing that we could do to set up our descendants with good, strong Hamingya, you know, to help them start their life off. You, they, you know, you know they, they end up where they are and they... they fall into the things that they fall into and get into the stuff that they get into based off of, of, of just nothing that they had control over, right? The, the Orlog that they that they had with that primal layer, uh, the fate sort of that was theirs. Hamingya, though, has a lot to do with how well they're set up for later on. So it, it would behoove us not to do everything we can now to not just benefit ourselves, but benefit our descendants. So that's why I think that out of all the different parts of self that we've talked about over the last uh, several weeks. Um, now, as we finalize this series, the Hamingya, to me, is probably, and I think really truly is, the most important part. So, I am definitely anxious to hear what all of you have to say about it. Um, I will probably am going to do something a little bit like a, like a wrap-up of, of uh, all of this and add some things in the next video, even though this is the video that fi finalizes the discussions, you know, the discussion topic. There are some things that um, somebody had asked uh, if I'm going to do a video about, um, which aren't necessarily parts of the self, um, but that are things that we read about or that we see in uh, this, you know, Norse spirituality, Germanic spirituality, that could raise some questions. So I think I may want to delve into that just a little bit. Um, more on that coming probably next week. Um, but anyways, I, like I said, I want to hear what everyone has to say uh, down in the comment section. So let me know what you thought of today's video and let me know what you thought of this series. If it was helpful, if, um, if it helps give you some clarity, um, just anything that you, if you think I'm way off course, if there's stuff that I missed that you think I should have, please add that down in the comments because everybody that reads it, everybody that comes through here and, and watches these videos and sees the comments are going to hopefully benefit from not just what I share, but what everybody else here shares. Uh, don't forget to like and comment on these videos, share them around, 
Make sure you subscribe and ding the bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. I really appreciate everyone's support uh, with, uh, with these videos here ongoing. It, it means the world to me. Um, everyone stay safe out there. You know, we're all still on this lockdown thing because of the virus uh, pandemic or whatever. So most importantly is if you don't have to go out, please don't. Uh, for all the essential workers that are out there doing their thing and providing for their families, hail to you. Be safe. All right. Wash your hands, all that kind of fun stuff. So thank you all again so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.